Hello, everybody. I'm just making sure that, again, everything on my end is, is looking okay. Um, yeah, welcome to today's live. I typically do these just out of pure laziness. Um, I don't want to do any like uh, editing or anything like that today. I got work tomorrow, so I just got a few projects that I have to get done today. And I'm going to start off by saying, can you hear me? <laughs> I know this, uh, these lives have plagued me with audio issues and video issues. And I know it's because of my ancient, like 15 year old laptop. This thing has been nothing but problems, but uh, looks like everyone can hear me. So uh, kind of the, I, I have a list of things today to do today and to remind myself because I forget. Uh, yeah. Even when I'm like talking mid sentence, I just forget what I'm talking about. So um, I have my little list. So the as the title says, I'm going to be repotting um, some cool things as well as some dangerous things. So the cool thing, um, the one of the this is kind of like the main thing for today is to be repotting my uh, mixed pot of um, neon pothos and my philodendron Brazil. So this thing has outgrown its pot. It's got it. Uh, it's got roots coming out the bottom. So that is today's cool, um, <laughs> cool plant. I have, I, I like. I have reading glasses, and I've had them for a long time. So um, I have to use them now because the uh, I, I can't read the chat. So um, it looks like everyone can hear me. Good morning. Good morning. Hear you fine. Um, not the pokey. <laughs> So we do have something extremely dangerous today. Uh, this I found at one of my local plant shops uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it's just been upstairs acclimating in my living room to natural sunlight. This is the Mexican fence post, and check out that price. 20 bucks. Uh, super sweet deal, and there's three of them in here. So I came prepared today with the... Uh, this is literally our salad tongs from upstairs. Um, yeah, my wife doesn't know that I'm using these, but I'll wash them good. I promise. I just I don't want to get poked. Uh, glasses look great. Uh, I just use them for reading, but thank you. Very classy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's uh, kind of the main things that I want to do today. And then I have a bunch, like a ton of propagations that I have uh, propagating in my bathroom. Don't ask me. Uh, I have a whole like propagation station in my bathroom. I also have a garden hose in my basement. So yeah, it's it's a it's a different kind of setup. So um, now I did put out uh, I guess a a little comment thing. Uh oh, is that a thrip? Nope, looked like a thrip. Anyways. Uh, I still find the occasional thrift down here. But anyways, um, in uh, my little community post this morning um, about this live, I just asked if there's, well, I didn't ask, but a couple of people maybe ma made mention of wanting to see some things. So um, I have a, uh, a monstera that's growing in water long term. Um, someone just asked at the start in the chat here about my seaweed blue. They, <laughs> they want to see a, an update with it. So I'll show an update. And then I did have a comment a little while ago uh, from someone asking about my moss plank uh, contraption. So um, I wanted to combine a wood plank with a little bit of moss on the front. So I, I stapled it and I kind of wrapped it up with some, um, some twine. And I can't remember which plant I had on there, if it was a mandula or a neon pothos. But that thing took like like six or eight months and it never got a leaf. So I, I uh, took it out of the pot and I did put a jade satin uh, scandapsis on there. So it's it's been getting a few new leaves and I think it's now to the point where I can show an update with that. So a couple little uh, propagations as well as just some updates. So now this is not my merch. I just want to mention this t-shirt quick. Um, this t-shirt was made by a company called Tropics Narcotics. Um, I did see their um, Instagram page. I think it was Wild Fern that actually posted this. She got a couple t-shirts. So I just reached out and said I love their artwork. They um, told me that they would send me a couple of their t-shirts. And I said I would uh, showcase it in uh, some of my videos. So this is the first one. And then here is the other one that they sent me. And I think 
it's super cool. It's way cooler than my merch shirts. So um, yeah, go check out their Instagram page. They are in Europe, I believe, Slovenia. I, I hope I pronounced that right. But um, yeah, if you're interested in any like plant merch, and I think they did the artwork for Russo Plant Care, uh, some of his instructional care guides and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, go check it out. Um, uh, well, these, someone said, uh, oh, my wife's going to get me. Um, these are the old tongs. So um, we got like three other ones upstairs. So maybe these will be incorporated into my plant care. So, okay, before I get into the repotting stuff, I'm just going to show the moss plank quick. And <laughs> the uh, bathroom, I, I, I got a, a Barina um, pro, uh, shelf. Um, there's like three shelves or whatever, and it came with uh, six grow lights. Uh, that thing is absolutely fantastic. Um, it's just a narrow little shelf. I just tucked it in my bathroom just so it's kind of out of the way here. Um, but yeah, that, that shelf is awesome. It's bit, kind of in the way, but not really. Okay, let's, I'll get the moss plank here. And it needs to be misted, I guess. So my, I, or like, I didn't even really come up with this idea. I actually, um, I think I received a comment from someone saying that another YouTuber, um, and Forgive me, I forget the channel, so I, I can't even take credit for this, but this is the moss plank. Um, I try and keep up on misting, but here's the back. So there's the uh, twine just kind of all wrapped around and it's just moss on the front. I've been trying to keep it uh, like a little more on the damp side. I just watered it the other day, but obviously it dries out really quick. Now I just wanted to see if this had any difference in overall like aerial root size or or development so this one is actually done pretty good on this and that's this one is uh the jade satin is actually quite a slow grower okay so i'm just looking at the node here looks like maybe the top node is rooted it's tough to tell or it's tough to see on camera but all without hitting the ceiling it's a beautiful plant and this node right up in here is not attached. You can see right there, but the one at the top, I want to say is attached. So whoever asked for an update with this, um, yeah, it's doing wonderful. It, I think it's probably been like a year since I did an update with this. So, uh, yeah, um, someone says their jade grows so slow. Yeah, they do. And I don't know, it's getting just, it, it's beautiful. Like it's an absolutely beautiful plant. So I'm trying to grow this one so that hopefully these leaves size up. I think it only had maybe one or two leaves when I first put it in here. So it's been growing on this plank for, uh, for quite a while. And I just watered it the other day. So yeah, that's the update. Um, someone said that they've tried moss planks, but they mold so fast and I couldn't keep it moist for life of me. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really treating it like a moss pole. Like I understand it's gonna dry out quick, but I don't know. I just wanted to maybe see if it would, I don't even know what, what my expectations were, but um, yeah, so. Um, so that's that. Now I'm going to show the Cebu Blue. Uh, Marissa says her jade grows so fast. Manjula, I, I just stuck one of those on a moss pole as well. I've been kind of, I don't want to say abandoning the wood plank, but I'm just trialing a couple different methods. The problem with these planks are like the plants attach most like I should, I shouldn't say they attach well. Philodendrons don't attach well to wood planks. Um, any sort of epiprenum, um, neon pothos, CB blue, all those ones, they do really good on planks. But the problem is, is once they uh, reach the top of the plank, it's really hard to uh, like air layer or take that top cutting and put it lower in the soil without the plant kind of reverting back to like a smaller leaf size. So 
I did make a recent video about uh, uh, like a, a modified plank where it has like a little propagation window. So I'm trying that. Oh, someone wants to see the Cebu Blue. Okay. I just have a whole wall of plants over here. I wish I could take the uh, camera with me. Now, whoever asked for the Cebu Blue update is going to be hugely disappointed <laughs> because here it is. So I had this very large Cebu Blue Pothos. It had uh, two extension pieces. The leaves were like, um, yeah, they were, this was one of the smaller leaves and it was growing fantastic downstairs here. It, it was beautiful. It was starting to get little fenestrations in the leaves as well. And just what I alluded to a minute ago, um, it reached the top of the plank. I tried to air layer it. It kind of worked. I chopped it off, uh, chopped it off the plank and I put it in a container of soil on a, a new plank. No, did I? Uh, yeah, I did. I tried to put it on a new plank and it went downhill so fast. All the leaves just started to droop. Uh, it rotted. I panicked. I pulled it out of the soil after only like three days. And then um, I'm already just reading the comments here and it died. It died. So super tragic. But this is what I was able to salvage. And it is like you can see the leaves were small, but now it's starting to size up. So until uh, I don't want to claim defeat on these wood planks, but uh, I'm trying to, I guess, modify it to the point where I can just take the top and then put it back in the bottom. Oh, I know. I'm already reading these comments. What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> I told you you're going to be disappointed. Um, but yeah, for now, it's on moss. And of course, it's rooting nice. Got some nice, chunky, fuzzy roots back there. But yeah, um, I'm not really disappointed because that's what I made this channel for was to basically just try different methods, chop stuff up. Um, there's going to be things that are successful and there's going to be things that fail. And clearly that air layering, and again, that's my fault. I didn't do it properly. Um, it failed. So uh, yeah, that's a, that's a nice route. So uh, someone said that they love the shirt. Did you miss the little intro? Um, this is probably my new favorite shirt. This is from uh, Tropics Narcotics um, on Instagram. They sent me this just to uh, to try. And, and yeah, it's a small business in Europe. So um, you muted. Uh-oh. <laughs> there, you're, there's a little fungus gnat. Uh, you're making me think that I'm having audio issues again. I had a little, a little panic there. Okay, now I'm going to show my water monstera. This one's been growing in water for, I want to say, probably a year. It's had a pot. And I do, oh, come, incoming. Okay, it's got roots like everywhere. And then this little line is to uh, an air bubbler pump thing. But this is, without dumping water on my pants here, this is one of the newer leaves. And this thing is super healthy. And here are the roots. Like I said, this is the second jar that it has been in. The first one was, oh, Pickles is barking. Uh, the first jar was, uh oh, I keep, okay, that's not a thrip. I thought it was a thrip. Um, the first jar, yeah, it was just full of roots um, and I had to smash it just to get the plant out. But if you're looking to grow monsters in just water, um, like I said, this one's been in here for quite a while now. I don't know exactly how long, but super healthy. Uh, there's never any, any yellowing or anything like that. Um, well, maybe a little bit on this one. I have to keep my eye out for thrip spider mites and that sort of thing. But um, the, I guess the main goals of it or the uh, tips, I guess, is obviously make sure it gets a lot of bright light. Um, I do have this air bubbler in there running 24 hours a day just to provide oxygen. Um, you can get that uh, anaerobic 
uh, environment where you get root rot and stuff. If there's not enough oxygen in whatever it is you're growing your plant in, uh, soil, uh, water, if there's no oxygen, or if the soil's too dense and it's just retaining too much moisture, it's gonna create that no oxygen environment and it's gonna root. But all these roots are super healthy and these aerial roots, they're just like all over the floor. So uh, I find the occasional, like I'm just reading the comments here, I find the occasional thrip down here, not a big deal. I just squish it and then I use, um, Pure Crop One, it's uh, like a foliar spray. So you just spray down the plant and it's not an issue. So um, none of my plants look like they're, you know, damaged or anything like that, but I will find the occasional thrip. That's just inevitable with having like all these house plants. Not a big deal. I don't, I don't stress about it anymore is what I'm saying. So um, yeah, make sure your plant gets a lot of light. Um, whoops. Um, See, I'm losing my train of thought. A lot of light, uh, air bubbles, oxygen. And then I use the Dynagrow Foliage Pro. I think it's like Super Thrive now. They, uh, I think they bought them out or I have no idea, but I've seen it or um, as Super Thrive. But I just use the hydroponics dosing in this and this thing just, it just grows. So looks like I'm getting a new, uh, new leaf here soon. Any other YouTubers in the chat? Okay, sorry, I just want to make sure I'm not missing any of the chat here. So I'm just going to go back a little bit. Whoa, 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 it's going. Please, please do your cactus today. Uh, I do want to get that uh, Mexican fence post cactus out of this soil and into um, kind of like a gritty mixture. Um, I do have a bunch of, like I said, propagations as well. And I've been trialing um, pawn with some of my allocations. So I'll show you how I set those up too if I get time. But I'm just trying to scroll down again on this computer that's like 30 years old. Now it's asking me if I want to hide menu. Okay. Um, yeah, feel free to just ask any questions and stuff as we go. Let's see. 52 people. Holy smokes. There was only like seven people when I started. So what are you all doing on a Tuesday? Doesn't anybody work? I go back to work tomorrow. I'm just on my five days off. Okay. So um, I'm going to keep this close by. So now, yeah, um, I've never, like, I don't have any experience with pond, so I can't say whether I recommend it or not. But um, I did have a bunch of alocasia quorums and propagations in my little prop boxes, and I did transfer them to, or a couple of them to pond. And then they are now in my Ikea cabinet. And um, yeah, they've, they've been doing well. Like they haven't uh, drooped or died or anything like that. So that's a good sign. Uh, H. Wilson retired at 53. That's awesome. Good for you. Uh, Alice, good luck on an interview on Thursday. <laughs> I did a little Instagram post about a, uh, I started a new job. So I, I got one little office plant and I said, that's all I'm going to have at my new job because I don't want to look like the <laughs> crazy person with a whole desk of like office plants. So, uh, and theoriums, can I use Molly's aeroid mix? I pretty much use that, uh, Molly's aeroid mix, uh, aeroid mix for pretty much everything except for like my cactus succulents. So, um, I just repotted this without getting poked here. I'm just going to move that guy. I just repotted my summer glory into this cool rectangle terracotta pot. And I did use the Molly's area mix. This it's fantastic. If you guys are interested, I know they do ship to the U S and Canada and there's a discount code, uh, in the description of all my videos too, if you're interested. So. I love it. It's uh, it retains just enough moisture, but it still uh, drains fast enough or dries fast enough that it's not going to cause like any root rot issues. So all my plants have been loving it. And then I picked this pot up uh, from one of my local plant shops, but unfortunately it doesn't have a uh, rectangular saucer. So this one, it outgrew, it was just in a small like round terracotta. 
and obviously it's a this one it's a creeping philodendron so i had to give it something a little bit longer to grow in but i absolutely love this plant okay so now to the first task <laughs> someone uh says they're 64 and all they do is cook and plant and watch uh, youtube awesome nothing wrong with that okay so get out my very fancy plant tools i got my butter knife uh, i got salad tongs and i got my pencil <clears throat> Um, yeah, I'm looking at a couple people that are retired, so I uh, technically have six years left, and then I can maybe do YouTube full-time. <clears throat> okay, I, I don't even remember when I potted these up, but I think they were all, like, individual um, nodes, leaf cuttings. I'm not entirely sure, but it's grown into quite the plant. So I'm going to try and keep this all intact. I don't want any of the vines uh, to, uh, oof. I'm not, uh, I'm not young anymore. <laughs> yeah. This year I turned 45. Okay, now I'm gonna get some soil here. Uh, for this one, I'm just using Fox Farm. I don't wanna call it cheaper soil, but um, it's definitely more like moisture retentive, which I want with this one, just because um, I have it under some uh, pretty good light upstairs. So this one dries out quite often. So I'm gonna keep it in a little bit um, of a denser soil, I guess. And then I'm just upsizing into one pot size larger. And uh, yeah, I was going to use like a, a plastic nursery pot, but I still want it to dry out, but just maybe not as fast as it has been. So uh, I'm ex expecting it to be fairly root bound. That's why it's probably drying out so fast. Um, that's awesome. Everyone's putting in their ages. So how old is, how old is everybody? I can see like YouTube analytics when I upload videos, um, I think my kind of demographics are between like, I think 25 all the way up to like 60 and plus is kind of, well, that, I guess that makes sense. That's pretty much everybody. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Okay. I just watered this this morning because if you, if I did show it before I watered it, like all these leaves were well, the neon one was starting to uh, flop over, so 40. Mandy says she'll be 40 this year. Um, hold on to your 30s, because as soon as you hit 40, it's like everything just starts to like break down. Like your knees are sore. Yeah, you just get sore. Rebecca says she turns 50 on Sunday. So with, with those that have birthdays coming up or just recently passed, happy birthday. Okay, now I can hear crunching already. I just want this to stay in one root ball. <laughs> so it just says wait till 50. Mm. Oh, there's crunching. Please stay intact. I literally just want to take this out and plunk it. Okay, yeah, that's some pretty nice roots. So I wouldn't want it any more root bound than that. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of soil. Oh, I think I heard Oscar scratching at the door there. I'm in my basement. This is my basement here. Um, and they were, they were just napping upstairs. Okay, so what do I do with my little cup? So yeah, this is the Fox Farm soil. It's, uh, it's a well-draining soil. I really like it. It's a good quality soil if you're just looking for like um, kind of like a regular, it's not like a potting mix, I guess you wouldn't call it that, but uh, it's like a tropical soil. Uh, 
Uh, I used to get carded when I was with my son after he was legal. <laughs> you must look young. Uh, Mark is 68 years old. <laughs> Preview of 50. So, yeah, for those that are in their 20s and 30s, uh, stay that way if you can, for as long as you can. Okay, so I just put a little bit of soil just at the bottom. And I'm just going to fill in the soil around the sides here. Oh, there's a big rock in here. Whoops. Okay, next is the cactus. I know you guys want to want to see the action. Uh, how is everybody's weather? Better yet, where are all of you guys from right now? I guess, well, I shouldn't say right now, but I am in Saskatchewan, and we've had a very mild winter. It sounds like weird weather kind of everywhere right now, but we had such a mild winter, and we just got like a huge dump of snow this weekend, and I, I can't remember the last time it snowed. We were pretty well snow free, like up until Christmas, which again is super rare. And then we've had lots of plus temperature days, which has been super nice. If every winter was like this here, then it would be manageable, but it looks like, or it sounds like a lot of people got snow this week. I uh, saw some stuff on like TikTok for California and places like that where uh, Northern California, I think got some snow. There was days, what was it, in January, it was actually raining here, which someone uh, just said, uh, Alice, uh, New England, raining here between Edmonton and Jasper. Yeah, it's, it's cold here today. I'm in uh, Regina. Can't wait for all these uh, spring temperatures to arrive again. <laughs> Kenora, Ontario. Land of Jeff's dreams. Yeah, I, I would love to have like a forested property or piece of land where I can build a little cabin or a little tiny home cottage thing. Um, Montana. Yeah, almost snow. No snow in Montana. Getting lots of rain though. Yeah, that's that's. I, I would assume that's pretty unusual for you there as well, which is above Montana. But well, I guess we're above uh, North Dakota and Montana. Okay, so that was a pretty easy repot. I just filled in a little bit of soil on uh, or in the bottom, and then I just filled in the sides there. So got to rinse this one off because it's got a lot of dirt on the leaves or soil on the leaves. So I'm just going to set this aside. And now it's time for the cactus repot. I do have oh, right here. You can use like a little pot just to kind of squeeze it if you want and pull it off. But you got to be careful of not to like poke yourself through the little, the little slits. <laughs> um, if some of you weren't around at the start, uh, this is the I just stumbled upon this, the Mexican fence post cactus. I got it at one of my uh, local plant shops here and it's 20 bucks. What a deal. These, like, obviously it's a smaller plant, so the, uh, the price is going to be reflected in that, but these can be quite expensive. I think I saw uh, a larger one for, I don't know what it was, definitely over hundred dollars. So 150 bucks, something like that. You need to build... An A-frame house, yes, with 17-foot south-facing uh, south windows. Absolutely. Um, I do have upstairs, we'll even know on my tongs, uh, my south-facing window, which all my cactus and succulents and stuff are in. So, um, okay, I'm just going to squeeze the edge here. Like I said, I want to break these up. So I do have some other pots um, to separate these in. So, nice roots. Where's my pencil? The 
these ones, uh, I, I can't remember the actual name of it, but uh, if you just Google this cactus, it's pretty impressive. Some people line them up like almost like hedges and they can get to be, I think I read like 20 feet tall. So uh, they're super cool. So now I'm just using my <laughs> pencil to uh, break away at the soil. And these should be separate plants. And I'm going to be putting it in uh, uh, Very Plants succulent mix. There's no soil. It's all just basically rocks. It's just a gritty, uh, gritty mixture. I just did a, a repot of one of my um, jades from upstairs. I completely hacked up the roots and it's doing wonderful. Like I haven't lost a single leaf and that was probably uh, maybe, maybe two weeks ago now that I did that repot. If you haven't seen that video, then go check it out because it's, it's, uh, it's quite dramatic. Um, I'm comfortable whoops, with basically tearing up root systems on cactus and succulents just because I know how they're going to respond. Uh, they're in appropriate conditions. So I have no problem with hacking up. I think I took off like more than half of its root system and it's, it's doing fine. It's in bright light and I'm just, I wanted to repot that jade um, before I started, uh, before I start to do uh, pruning this spring for branching, which again, there'll be another video. So I'm just gonna take off as much soil as I can. I'm not gonna get too crazy here and, um, remove all the soil just because when it's in that gritty mixture and every time I water, it's just going to flush that soil out over time. So I'm going to get rid of this soil and then I'll uh, kind of get the pots here. Where do you get the potting mix you're using for cactus? I buy it right from Very Plants. Uh, I usually just do kind of like a bulk order uh, with aeroid mix and succulent stuff and they just, they ship it right, uh, right to me. Again, uh, if you guys wanna try it out, there is a discount code in the description of my videos. And I'll show you what it looks like, so. So it has, I, like I love the packaging just cause it has all the ingredients on the side and I'm going to get this out of the way because I don't need it. Whoops. And I picked out a few pots, terracotta ones. I'm going to, I got a smaller one and I just grabbed a few. I keep a whole bunch of these out in my shed. So I got a small one for the very small or the smallest one. And then I got a few other ones there as well. Oh, that one just fell right off. So it looks like a little like cucumber. <laughs> and then this one, yeah. So it is literally just three. One of those. I thought it was maybe scale there for a second, but it's it's literally just three of these little plants in one pot. So don't get poked. See those little bumps on there? Uh, I thought it was scale, but it doesn't look like it. So what are what is everyone's favorite type of plant? Is it cactus succulents? Is it aeroids, trailing plants, climbing plants? I would love to hear. Whoops, what you guys like, um, and maybe I can tailor some of my videos to, to what you guys like. Um, this stuff is awesome. I don't know why my light up there is creaking and cracking, but hopefully it doesn't fall. Um, send some sun west. Um, H. Wilson says, send some sun to the west coast. Um, you're always welcome to come to Saskatchewan. Uh, we have tons of sun. It's always sunny here. I think we're one of the sunniest places in Canada. And yeah, that's something we don't have a shortage of is sunlight for sure. 
huge fans of aeroids it looks like um yeah i have my ikea cabinet which i have most of my anthuriums um in there as well as some allocations i did start adding some into there uh, i wanted to make a video i'll get this out of the way here i was just actually looking at uh, one of my other live streams from like i think it was three or four months ago and all of this area was um, it was not grown in like this, but it's funny going back and looking at my videos and just seeing how much this whole area is growing in. It's crazy. So what my point was is, I don't know if you can see it here or not, but this anthurium is my anthurium brownii. It's got massive leaves here. This is honestly one of the easiest. Um, yeah, it gives me no stress. Oh, there's a yellow leaf, but it's probably not getting enough light. It's Probably the anthurium that causes me the least stress. It never gets any browning leaves. It's in a small little pot. It gets these large, massive leaves. And I actually won this plant in an Instagram contest. So easily one of my favorite anthuriums. Um, Jesse says uh, they love my shirt. Um, it is from Tropics Narcotics uh, on Instagram. I did uh, get a couple shirts to try out. Yeah, this is this is honestly my favorite, and it's not like a white. It's almost like a cream. It's like an off white. So I absolutely love this shirt. My favorite. <laughs> okay, so someone is saying in a fair cage fight, Anthurium crystalline versus Alocasia. Um, I'm going to go anthurium. It's more of a hardy plant. I don't want to say I'm having problems with alocasias, but I'm just, I'm having problems. <laughs> uh, I'm stuck in that, you know, the one leaf club kind of thing, but uh, for a few of them, I guess. Um, now the one alocasia that just never stops growing is the regal shield. This thing's a beast. I think I got this one. Um, it was either a, a small side. Oh, it's getting a new leaf here. It was either from a corm or like a smaller plant from a large plant that I had outside. But this thing is beautiful. Like, I love this one. This one is super easy going. But there are others, like my Jacqueline, which this thing was beautiful and... I think this leaf had spider mites. I've sprayed it down quite a bit, but um, look at that. Well, it's getting a new leaf, so. But when when they don't have leaves, they just look terrible. They can be uh, pretty particular. So if you miss a watering or if you let them get too dry, then they throw a fit. Or if they don't get enough humidity, then they throw a fit. So obviously there's different, or there's varieties that maybe require a little bit more humidity and watering and that sort of thing where uh, this regal shield is just it's a tank it can uh, withstand getting dry and all that sort of thing so anyways um, for most anthuriums uh, make sure in again in my experience I am not a professional because look at this this is one of my anthuriums pathetic <laughs> I can't get this one to grow. I think this is the Clarinervium. And I don't, like I just have it in ambient humidity here. I do have a humidifier going, but I, I can't get this one to like, just keep its leaves. It, it just looks like trash all the time. So, um, whereas other people will say it's super easy, but in my experience, not easy. Uh, this one, I believe this is the Clarinervium. It's fairly easy. Um, it's just got this one big giant leaf. This one's a little bit crispy, but, and then I have all of my ones in my cabinet there. Okay. Now for the succulent mix, um, I will like, after this live, I will go and rinse. I will like thoroughly water these just because it has some not dirt, but almost like a dust. So I'm just going to put a little bit in. I guess I should get this out of the way. And put a little bit in the pot. And then I'll use my, the tongs. 
Um, Diane says she needs help growing a fiddle leaf fig. Uh, it's pretty much lost most of its leaves to repot. What kind of light is it in? Those require actually quite a bit of light. Uh, I have um, the one I have upstairs under a Sansi grow light and it's just in like a smaller, what is it, an east facing window. It loves it, but basically uh, don't touch it, don't look at it. Just you can occasionally like you glance at it and uh, appreciate it, but um, just leave it alone. Just make sure it gets a lot of light. That's probably the thing that whenever I get questions about uh, plant care or something like that, it's usually related to a light issue. Okay, hold this little guy down. Okay, I don't wanna touch it. I need to get poked. If you don't know what kind of light you're getting in um, the area where your plant is, just get a light meter or you can even download a light meter app. That is, oh, come on. That is a good way to determine whether your plant is getting enough light or not. Uh, how does your wife handle the jungle in your house? Um, at first, uh, I heard frequently that I have way too many plants, but since YouTube has uh, started uh, generating some income, <laughs> I really haven't heard <laughs> any complaints. No, I, everyone likes it. I'm just kidding, by the way. Like down here, like this is my basement. So this is kind of like it, my workshop area, I guess. I do have plants upstairs. I've been slowly um, downsizing with some of my plants upstairs. But downstairs, obviously, it's just growing in like a, a, a jungle, literally. This one's delicate. I don't want it falling over, but once I give it some water, then it'll definitely uh, settle. Uh, Diane, thank you. I won't look at it. Yeah, don't, don't look at it. Um, for light meters, I just use a couple cheap ones on my phone and anywhere between, like I use the foot candle setting. It's not a true depiction of like how much light your plant is actually using. It's just, it's a very rough estimate of the amount of visible light, I guess. It's the, the whole like light conversion stuff. It's kind of confusing, but, um, with foot candles, that's the, uh, measurement that I use between like 50 and 250 foot candles is considered low light 250 to like 500 uh, to like 750 is medium and anything over that 750 um, to like over a thousand is considered bright light. Yesterday I measured uh, my jades. They're off to the side of a south facing window and um, I just saw someone um, just saying that Matt from Techland is here. So love the tongs. Yeah, I've I've done like little cups and you just scoop it up, but you know, I don't want to get poked today. But um, yeah, back to the light meter stuff. Um, most of, well, I have a couple of my jades directly in front of the self-facing window, but I have a few on a table just off to the side. So I get some kind of Western afternoon kind of evening exposure. And I put my light meter up to it yesterday and it was reading, I think, 4,000 foot candles, which is awesome. So obviously the, the light is getting a little bit more intense as spring approaches. The enemy, uh, Mandy says the enemy is here. And she's referring to, if you guys don't know, me and Matt are in a, a competition, uh, a collaboration um, with the Pothos plants. We just made a video uh, the other day, and I think it's pretty hilarious. Matt's was awesome. 
uh, even though he stole my IV bag idea. Okay. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do with uh, three of these cactus. Um, he's gathering some <laughs> intel. I'm not showing anything on here. I'm not giving uh, any more tips or hints away at what I'm doing. But yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with three of these. I might keep two and I might sell one or trade, I guess. If someone's in the market for a trade. I'm surprised I haven't got poked yet. So here's two. This is a little guy. <laughs> uh, it was too good not to steal. Uh, that series, it, it makes me laugh. Uh, it's so much fun. So if you guys haven't seen or know about that series, go check it out. Uh, me and Matt will once a month, or we'll try once a month to upload kind of an update video and, and make it fun and interesting for you guys. Um, this last one was pretty fun because he got all these like medical supplies from <laughs> from the hospital. Uh, congratulations on your uh, the birth of your child. So. But he did uh, bring home some medical supplies, and I thought it was absolutely hilarious. The Hardy Boys of the plant world. Tell your friends. Tell everyone. Um, yeah, we just. I think we have. Uh, I guess a lot in common in regards to plants and how we. Um, run the channel and we don't take ourselves too seriously anyways at least i don't i'm just here uh, putting out videos on youtube um and i'll have you know matt i have oscar locked up uh, upstairs well i have the door closed i'm just in the basement but can't sabotage me Uh, what else do I have on my list? What else do I want to do? Oh, yeah, just some of my allocations. I have, like, or my propagations. I have a, a bunch of boxes in there. I, I don't know how many I'm going to get to. I don't really feel like repotting, like, a ton of those. But I'll definitely show you guys what I'm propagating right now. Like I said, I really don't know what I'm going to do with all these plants. Um, I don't know if I'm going to... I'll probably just give them away. If there's cool trades in, in where I am, like um, in my area, then I'll maybe do a trade or something like that if someone's got a cool plant. But I really don't have like too many plants that are like wish list plants right now. So what are you guys searching for at the moment? Do you guys have any wish list plants? I know in talking with um, some plant shops and stuff like that, it sounds like they're, I don't want to say slow, but the people still go out and buy wish list plants. Um, I guess there's one wish list plant that I actually did a, a trade with. Um, I have a, a couple little philodendron and domesticums uh, that I've been propagating in my little prop bins. So I did trade that for a philodendron uh, serpents uh, chunk, I guess, or wet stick or whatever you want to call it. So I do have that. I just placed it in one of my perlite prop boxes. So I got that going. And the only other plant that um, I want is a philodendron mexicum, Mex mexicanum, something like that. Uh, that one's got some pretty cool leaves. This one was sold to me as the mexicanum, but it's definitely not. Um, I can't remember um, how to pronounce it, but it's the... Starts with an A, A, T, A, B, something or another, out of out of potency or something. I, I don't know, but um, definitely not a Mexican. Um, is there any plants that you guys want to see, like, updates on that I have uh, close by me here? Here's another newer plant, the philodendron. What is it called? The uh, Patriciae? Patrici oh, I can't even pronounce it. Uh, look at this leaf. Beautiful. Okay, these are kind of make me nervous here. I feel like I'm going to reach over and then I'm going to get poked with a cactus. Okay, so I got these three potted up. I'm going to keep two. I'll probably trade one, get rid of one. 
actually I'm going to keep this one and maybe get rid of this one. So a variegated African violet uh, that's on Alice's wish list. Uh, Monster Burl Marks Flame. Um, I did get one right here. This is from Lee from Kill This Plant. Beautiful. Uh, I can't wait until it starts to get the uh, splits or the slits in the leaves. Love to see your jade props. Uh, I don't really have any... Well, like I have my propagations that I took from like six years ago. They're trees now. They're upstairs. Um, I'll probably do like another update video here in the spring when I do um, my um, pruning for branching. I'll definitely show those. Uh, Marissa says, my fiddle leg at the top is at 3,000 foot candles. That's awesome. That's good light. That's exactly what they want. So if you ever have a plant that's not growing or it's just not looking good, uh, just grab uh, a light meter app from your app store or whatever. And just, just at different times of the day in different places, just check around your house um, and just to see what kind of light it is getting. So <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, uh, I'm just reading some of the chat. Um, okay, I'm going to grab a couple of my prop boxes here. I'll show some of... Oh, I want to do the pond. That's what I want to do. Okay, I got a couple of my little... These are just like takeout containers. <laughs> I'm going to get these cactus out of the way here because I feel like I'm going to poke myself and then I'll go get my little bag of pawn. Um, it was recommended to me by again another viewer suggesting that I try this out and I just really haven't had the opportunity yet so it came up on Amazon and it, it's not cheap stuff so this bag I use the actual brand name stuff we choose a pawn and I'll grab sorry I'm just trying to clear some stuff up I'll grab uh, a couple of my allocations in my little Ikea cabinet, but I just want to show you, I stuck a bunch of forms in here. Um, yeah, I'll probably in the next, like, what is it? March, April, uh, probably closer to the end of April, I'll start pruning my plants that way. Um, I don't know if you just watched that Jade video. I, pardon me. I literally hacked off like most of the roots. So I want to give it time to uh, repair those roots. And then once it starts pushing out new growth, uh, then I'll start chopping it up again. Um, so back to the allocations. I literally just chucked in a bunch of corms and some uh, stems that weren't doing well. I just threw in here. So there's, um, yeah, just a bunch of, goodies in here so this one is the cupria i believe there was a bunch of corms uh here's a jacqueline i have a few new guinea gold and i think there's a couple golden bones in here and a bat wing so i'm not too sure exactly what they are i tried to label a, a couple i know there's some jacklins and some uh, some bat wings in there um but my label, uh, my label maker broke, and then I just got lazy, so I didn't buy a new one. Um, all I did, or what I'm using for pots for these um, pond, are just these like cheap dollar store cups. And then without slicing myself up here, I am just cutting three little holes just at the bottom, just so that the water can drain out of. So I just make like a little... I don't know if it'll show up or not, but just a little hole right there. I'll make three of them and then I'll place the plant inside of it, obviously. And okay, so it has some holes. Place the plant and the pond in here. And then I just use another cup, which doesn't have holes. And I just put it in as uh, the insert. So it does have, or does hold like a little bit of water at the bottom. And since it is quite a, uh, a tight fit that 
the water actually comes up the side of the uh, of the pot there. So it kind of has or it acts as like a little water reservoir. So I'll go get a couple of my ones that I have in pond just to show you. Uh, and again, I really don't know what these ones are. They're just in my Ikea cabinet and they've been in here for probably a week now. Oh, so here's a, an allocation of fried egg, the variegated. Um, it did, like I found a little corm after doing a repot. So here's the, the pond and it's actually getting a new leaf. I don't know if you can see it or not, but all the roots that it, uh, I planted with it, they're still white, nice white roots, nothing rotted and it's doing wonderful. So there's just, well, that's kind of grimy water, but there's just a little bit of water at the bottom. And when you put it in, you can see the water, uh, I guess, rises. So that's, I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do. That's how I've been doing it. And so far they seem to like it. Uh, yeah, I don't know what this one is. This one might be, I don't know. I'm not even gonna guess. Maybe a bat wing. Same thing, like all the roots on the side, nice and white. And then you can see there is just a little bit of water in the bottom. And as you put the cup in, then it just raises up to about like halfway. I will be, um, did I add fertilizer? I think I did. I'll be using that Danagor Foliage Pro, just diluted in water. And I've just sprayed the, uh, the choose upon, and then I just let the water kind of just drip down into the cup. And so far, it's been liking it. So yeah, like, look at this. So look at those roots. Whoop. This is the New Guinea gold, two new, uh, two new Guinea golds in here. And same thing, like all these roots, like they're super small roots, but they didn't die, which is awesome. They went like straight from the prop box, uh, which is like 100% humidity to my Ikea cabinet, which probably at best, just because there's gaps in the doors, I would say um, maybe 60, 70%. So it's been doing well. Um, so yeah, I, I've had really good success with allocations in perlite. Um, but I definitely wanted, and again, it's a, it's a very similar substrate, uh, but I just wanted to try this pond and I don't know if it's the pond or if it's the, um, containers that are, I guess, achieving the better success. So we'll see once they uh, start to grow and mature. <laughs> Matt's out because of allocations. He hates them. Um, they're difficult plants for sure. They're, they're not easy. So you have to really get your environment dialed in. And uh, downstairs here, I don't have a humid, uh, whoops, environment. Like right now it's 48%, 22 degrees. Uh, snippers. Someone asked where the snippers and the pencil is. Pencil is always here. Always have a fresh pencil. And I even have salad tongs. If you weren't here for that part of the video, salad tongs have made it into the, into the videos. Uh, yeah, like I said, there's some easy allocations and then there's ones that are just ridiculous. I had a, uh, a large cupria, died. Uh, the Jacqueline, gone, died. Well, I shouldn't say died, went dormant. Um, that's one of the things that I guess early on in, um, collecting plants that, uh, again, just like most everyone, they have, they buy a beautiful allocation and it, it dies or you think it's died and then you toss it out. But then you, uh, learn later on that they just go dormant. And as long as the uh, bulb or the corm is, um, still firm, then it'll grow back. So, um, apparently Something in pond helps stabilize the pH. Definitely. Um, pH, yeah, that's definitely a, a factor with plants as well. So very interesting. I just really haven't done a lot of research with pond, but so far these little guys have been doing very well, which I'm 
very surprised at. Oh yeah. So I think I'm going to just do a couple of these. I'm gonna put um, maybe one of these Jacklins. So again, here's just a tiny little corm. It's got some nice roots, beautiful leaf. I want one of these for my um, cabinet. And what else? There's a couple other smaller ones here. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll put both of these in just so I can get, clear up some space. I have to do this fairly quick because even with these like small bulbs, they dry out like so fast. So I don't want these roots to die. Oh, so Joanna loves the glasses. Thank you. I usually just use them for reading. Um, I've had them for a few years, but I just, I'd never wear them. So I'm going to put both these little corms in there. Like they're tiny. Do you all get fungus gnats in your alocasia? Um, I get the occasional one. Again, it depends on what type of growing medium, if you use like a really heavy peat based or even moss poles, I've been finding fungus gnats in moss poles, then definitely you will get fungus gnats if it's, if it's staying uh, just a little bit too wet. Okay, I'm gonna have to, I'll go get my little uh, water spray bottle thing because I don't want these to dry out. Those little roots will dry out real fast. Oh, actually, I got a little. My little watering can. Oh, I just realized I probably shouldn't have put this on the seat because if I spill this, I'm going to have to sit in a puddle of water. We're good. Okay, so I'm just going to flush the soil out here first a little bit. Okay. I'm going to do a couple more of these and then I think that's going to be pretty much it for the, for the live today. It seems like everything went smooth with this one today. So I hope, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I got a couple projects that I wanted to get done. And like I said, I just did it out of sheer laziness. Um, I didn't want to do any editing just cause I have to go back to work tomorrow. So it's kind of all drained through. And now there's no water at the bottom. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water. I'll bring it in close so you can see it. Once it starts going up, maybe like halfway up. So something like that. Now I don't know if Lechuza Pond or Pond or whatever you want to call it is good at like wicking up um, the water from lower or if you have to keep the water level higher. Um, if you have experience with pond, uh, let me know down in the description. If you have to keep like the reservoir quite high or if it actually wicks up. I, when like potting plants in perlite, I found it didn't really wick up like I kind of expected it to. It's quite porous and I thought uh, since they're in contact with each other, then it would just wick up what really didn't do that. And I can't see pond being like that either. Um, I was putting this little water tree down. Now, uh, thanks for everyone. Alice just says, I've been loving your live streams. Um, yeah, 
I wouldn't be, obviously be doing these if you guys didn't tune in. So I appreciate um, everything you guys uh, do for my channel. So, oh, just getting a text message. Um, what am I doing here? I might actually pull out these. I have a feeling these are the bat wing. The plant, the mother plant that I got these from, uh, very quickly died off right after I bought it. Um, so I can't remember why I got all these corms if I, well, obviously I took it out of the pot. I think I switched soil and I found a bunch of corms in there. So I want to take those out. And then there's a few more of these uh, New Guinea gold. Got my everything plants mug. I can't see the chat anymore. Um. Okay. Just going to slice off a couple of those. I think that went right into the, into the water container. I got this idea from, uh, I think North, uh, North Shore Tropicals does this. They, they cut up their little uh, containers for their plants. So I'm gonna put this in my little Ikea cabinet and then I'm gonna pot up all these little bat wings and maybe these um, New Guinea gold. And then maybe one of these domesticums and then that'll be it for the video. Go have some lunch and then carry on with the day. I still have to go out and, sh oh, that's the New Guinea gold. I have to go out and shovel. My driveway still has a bunch of snow on it. Look at these, like they're so tiny. Look at those little roots. I don't know if I'm necessarily gonna keep all these as well. Uh, I don't want to sell them or give them away or trade them when they're this small. So I want to get them to be somewhat of a decent size so that I can make a fair trade or something like that. I think I've had consistently like 50 some people for the stream. So again, thanks for, thanks for tuning in today. I'm hoping that this channel hits um, a hundred thousand this year. I'm come, I think I'm like 83 now. So that's my goal is to, is to get that hundred thousand YouTube subscriber plaque. That's my, that's my dream. And I never even thought, um, my channel would, anyone would watch it. So I appreciate all the support. It is taking me longer today just because I have so much stuff here. Usually I, I clear off. Um, I won't have the computer and stuff like that. So it's, it's, I'm not usually this unorganized when propagating, but I can usually just fire these off. No problem. Um, how do we contact you? You can, again, depending where you live, I guess if you're in Canada, um, I can probably ship these within Canada, but I don't think I can, I don't have any of those uh, fancy certificates to ship international or anything like that. But if you're in Canada and you want to do a trade, just go over to my Instagram and then just send me a message saying if you want to trade or if you are looking for a, like a wish list plant or something like that. And I, I have one available. I have no problem uh, doing trades or, or giving away cuttings. So yeah. Obviously it's like minus 30 right now in where I am. So I'm not shipping anything out, but I will <clears throat> maybe put a list like on Instagram, just showing some available cuttings or uh, things that might interest you guys. I'm not in it for the money making reasons, just to, uh, to share the, the passion of plants, I guess. So I'm just filling the water 
up on this one a little bit. Just like that. There. So I'll put these ones in the cabinet, these two. Uh, is there any other questions or like anything that you want to see, you guys want to see updates with? Because I'm going to wrap this up here pretty soon. Oh, I got to do that domesticum. I might leave these other ones in here for now, like these. Um, I don't even know if they're golden bone or the New Guinea gold, but um, I'm just going to leave those in there. I'm going to close it up because I don't want these to dry out. I'll do a, a domesticum quick. I'm going to grab the succulent soil for the domesticum. There's just pawn everywhere. It's like LECA. You, after you clean up, you just find LECA everywhere. Here, I'll show these. I have a Diefenbachia cutting, and then I have like some little mini tetraspermas, and then I have the domesticum. Uh, this is an all green leaf, but it has some variegation on there. So, okay, so I'm going to get rid of this stuff before I tip the water and step on my prop box and all that kind of stuff. Now for that one, I'm gonna use, I don't know if I can get to it. I'm gonna use that aeroid mix. Very plants aeroid mix and I don't wanna bump the camera. So earlier I was using the succulent mix and this is the aeroid mix if you've never seen it or heard of it. This is what I use almost primarily for um, for all of my plants except for cactus and stuff. So uh, mixed alocasia. Oh, I do have, I forgot. I do, I did make a, a mixed alocasia a long time ago and it's in perlite. I think it's been doing okay. I just put a bunch of random uh, corms in there. But here's my little mix pot. So it's got cupria, it's got the um, alocasia phratic, it's got, uh, I can't remember what this is, the uh, dragon something or another, I can't remember. But yeah, that's my little mix pot. It's always been this size, it just doesn't want to size up. So that's that. I can hear one of the dogs barking upstairs. Our old girl. She's probably getting lonely. How's the giant fenestrated monster? This one? It's awesome. I love it. Um, Zero regal shield alocasia is as exciting as you had hoped. I love it. That's one alocasia that just gives me no headaches at all. I'm actually going to use a couple of these cups for the domesticum here as well. Peace lilies, they're, yeah, they're easy plants, but they can be a little bit tricky as well. Uh, watering really isn't a problem. Like they just get a little bit droopy, but I find... Uh, you have to kind of keep up on the uh, just the pruning of the leaves. All the old leaves will turn yellow. So it never looks like, at least for me, mine never looks like super pristine. I always have some sort of yellowing. Oh, boy. Uh, yellow, actually, it looks pretty good right now. So I get a lot of these like older leaves yellowing. This one actually looks pretty good. And it's always flowering. So, oh yeah, see, I do get leaves like this. I'll get the occasional older leaf that yellows, but uh, just snip them off and just make sure that they don't get like super dry. Otherwise you'll get some yellow leaves. But this one actually looks pretty good. So I got this one. Um, I do have, I can't remember the name of this one. It's just the variegated one. This one I find gets yellow leaves like, like quite often. So something like this, I'll just snip them off. But, um, and it's got an old dying leaf here. How much light does my peace lily get? Um, I do have, I wish I could show you. 
I do have it underneath. If you send me like a message on Instagram, I'll send you a picture of the light that I have. It's under one of like Soltec uh, Vita Girl lights. And I'm just gonna use my little light meter. I use the Photon it's called. And right now, uh, underneath the light, just at the top of the leaves, it's getting 480 foot candles. So medium light, it likes a lot of light. And I just, I take mine over to the, uh, well, I have a garden hose in my house. I just take it over to the shower and I spray it off. And I will, I don't even really fertilize that often. It just gets filtered tap water. The reason why I have a garden hose in my basement is we have a water softener and I can't spray off plants upstairs or just like with the regular shower because it has obviously salt content in there and over time you're going to kill your plant if you have a water softener or um, or I don't know even know if hard water applies to it but so that's why I have I got a, uh, a plumbing company to come in and just hook it up to the uh, non uh, water softener line, I guess, just the uh, um, one that comes in the house. So it is just regular water, not softened water. Uh, what am I doing here? Where's my... Uh, Joanna, are you referring to the peace lily that's stunning? I have a couple other ones too. Um, this one, this is another variegated sensation piece lily. This, this thing gets huge. This one's beautiful. It's got two plants in there. I think I paid, yeah, 20 bucks. So, uh, 10 bucks for this beauty. It should get huge. Um, and I do have the larger, just regular green sensation piece lily. How often do I fertilize my water root monstera? Um, there's always fertilizer in there. It's the hydroponics uh, mix from the Dynagrow Foliage Pro. There's a, a, a mixture, hydroponic mixture on the back of the bottle. So I just follow that. Um, well, basically I just add like four or five mils in a like four liter jug of water. And then anytime that that container needs to be uh, topped up with water, I just dump it in. So hopefully that's what you mean. I don't fertilize propagations um, like these in propagation containers or anything like that. I don't fertilize. It's just I miss them when it's dry, uh, whether it's in uh, sphagnum moss or perlite. I don't fertilize my propagations. Okay, so I got two little. Some plants, um, yeah, some plants are super, super hardy, but I definitely wouldn't recommend watering with softened water because over time you're going to get that salt buildup and you're probably going to get some yellow dying leaves. And yeah, uh, I guess as long as you flush it out good, uh, every so often, then then it should be okay. But um, best is if you can use like rainwater or um, yeah, snow, melted snow. <laughs> Peace lilies are beautiful. They're just you have to manage the the old dying leaves. So I just cut them off, and then it just regrows. So. So these are the little domesticums. You can see there's a little bit of variegation on, on these lower leaves, but I'm gonna put it in highlight. And this is just from one node. It's just a little wet stick, I guess. And it has started its own little node. So I'm just gonna uh, pot it up just like that. And then I will take it over and give this one some water as well. Anytime you take a propagation from a like a container where it's it's receiving like 100% humidity, you just don't want to let it dry out. Otherwise, it's it's a goner. So you could probably even like put a bag over top of this or 
um, put it back in another like propagation container and just like slowly acclimate it to uh, regular conditions. So maybe open the lid every um, for a couple hours a day and just kind of extend that, if that makes sense. This one's tiny, but it has some pretty nice roots. Peace lilies, uh, I think they're super underrated. Like they're beautiful plants, even just the regular green one. I just love a regular green leaf. They're like, it's, yeah, it's beautiful. You don't need like all these expensive, uh, highly variegated plants to have a beautiful collection. Uh, just these simple common ones are, are beautiful. Peace lilies are awesome, super underrated. Do I plant herbs? Uh, no, I don't. I tried to do some like outdoor gardening stuff. Um, I bought some like raised planters, but we're just, we do lots of camping and stuff. And every time uh, we come back camping, just everything gets roasted for the week. Um, I don't have, or I probably could set up like a water drip system, like on a timer. But uh, for the last couple of years, um, well, this is a few years ago, I just asked my neighbor to come over and like water my potatoes and stuff. And Potatoes were the only ones that um, I got uh, uh, some potatoes from. I just used those grow bags, uh, felt grow bags, and it was awesome. So I uh, got a ton of potatoes that year, but we planted other things like peas and um, uh, cauliflower and that sort of thing. And they just got either roasted by the heat or eaten by uh, caterpillars, stuff like that. So I don't really do too much like um, gardening, gardening. I'll have my outdoor flowers and plants and that sort of thing, which uh, I just do in my spare time. But in regards to like actual gardening, um, we just now plant strawberries and just easy stuff in there. So um, I think that is pretty well all that I want to do. I'm going to, like I said, go over. I can give them water right now. Um, I'm just going to put these on my little propagation shelf and let them kind of acclimate to their conditions. And like I said, if there's anything that you guys see on my Instagram or in my videos and stuff, like don't flood me with, you know, can I have this plant or that plant, that sort of thing. But if I maybe post something and if you have something to trade or if you have a wish list plant, just uh, let me know. I am open to trades for plants and that sort of thing. But now I think I'm going to uh, clean up the uh, basement here and then go have some lunch. But so I think that's going to be it. If you guys don't have any other questions or anything like that, I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to watch my live. It's now an hour and 20 some minutes. So the, the average of 50 some people that have been here, um, thank you for uh, tuning in and hanging out while I repot a few plants. Uh, I still think the Monstera all green is far more attractive than the variegated ones. Absolutely. I love just a beautiful um, solid green leaf. You can't go wrong with that. So hello, Houston. <laughs> City water. Well deserved lunch. But yeah, so um, after this video, it should upload to YouTube as well. So if you have any other questions, like I said, just reach out on Instagram. I'm always there answering questions or just having some plant chat. Or if you want to leave it after this video in the comment section, I do read all of my uh, comments. I get ideas from you guys. And yeah, uh, again, I can't say this enough. I always appreciate the support. Thanks for taking time for watching my videos. Um, go support small businesses, your local plant shops. Um, go check out Tropic Narcotics on Instagram. And uh, yeah, so I think that's going to be pretty much it. I'm going to, like I said, clean up, go have some lunch, and hopefully you guys have a wonderful day as well. Entertainment. Well, it was kind of, um, well, there goes Zoe. She's barking again. I don't know if you heard her, but um, H. Wilson says, thanks for, so much for the entertainment and info. Um, I think it would have been more entertaining if I had some uh, cactus mishaps, if there was uh, blood and gore <laughs> on, on the video, then that would be entertaining. But um, all of that was avoided with the salad tongs. So <laughs> you might consider pond for your applications. 
Uh, I don't know, Amanda, if you're just tuning in or not, but um, I just placed some of my alocasias in pawn. Um, it was recommended to me by a, another viewer uh, or subscriber. Uh, they suggested it, so I know it's been on my things to do lately, but finally got to it, so. Watching while I work. <laughs> Don't let anyone get you watching. Okay. All right. Thanks. Take care, everyone. Bye.